Good Saturday. It is January 2022. Your usual service is now resumed. Your vlog's done for another year. Actually, the, the last vlog was the first occasional vlog of the year, wasn't it really? That was a cutover. It was like an occasionally Yulish vlog. But we, <laughs> we are back. Uh, the cats are both looking at me like, what are you doing? They're both yawning. Well, two of them are anyway. The other one's asleep in his bed over there. Oh no, he's watching me now as well. Uh, we'll update on it. We'll, we'll show you the cats later. They're, they're all fine. Uh, so Gemma is at work. It's Saturday, so you know, usual. Uh, I just dropped her off in a rush because my Lego parcel that I mentioned in the last vlog was supposed to be delivered on Monday. And I just got a ping this morning from the courier saying it'll be here today between half eight and half nine. So I had to rush back. And of course, rushing back, I almost got stuck in traffic. So there's been an accident. I hope everyone's okay there. Uh, although people were driving like utter lunatics considering the roads are very wet and aquaplaning is going to be a real issue. Uh, you know when they do the flash and sign thing? 40 miles an hour on the motorway. No, people were ignoring that. You know that's like a, an enforceable speed limit? <laughs> it's not a suggestion. Anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, the parcel should turn up later. Uh, plans for the weekend are... We're going to cook a curry today. Uh, we're going to, we're trying to eat, not, not, I wouldn't say healthily, we, we, healthy early, healthy early, that's a word, which is made up. Uh, we're trying to eat a little bit better, so um, not as many takeouts. Actually, that's a lie, because we don't really eat many takeouts as it is. Just not as much snacking. The problem with not, not as much snacking is we kind of didn't snack a lot over Christmas, and uh, we do have a lot of Christmas food, snacking food left. Like lots of cheese, we've got so much cheese. So um, we are just pacing ourselves on that. Um, also, uh, tomorrow plans, maybe try and get out the house a bit because we haven't been out for a while. Um, get some fresh air, don't know if it's gonna be zoo, don't know if it's gonna be somewhere local. And tomorrow we'll be doing our roast dinner as, we, as, as is tradition. But for today, uh, I have some things to show. Um, not going to be showing much VR stuff because it's really difficult to show but the other parcel that I ordered over Christmas has turned up so we're going to look at installing the ring alarm system which I'm told is more or less toolless Pixie's obsessed with doors she likes to push doors open more often than not likes to push them closed and lock herself into rooms so yeah she's a loony but yeah for those who are unfamiliar, I'll go over some of the basics of what the ring door system does, but ring uh, security system does, so it's not the the doorbell, it's the security system. Uh, but there are some really good resources online if you want to look at like how a full unboxing install, because I'll be honest, mine's already unboxed, so I could charge it all up. Anyway, we'll cover that off in a bit. Um, updates as far as day-to-day -day stuff. We're actually feeling a little more confident than a Florida trip in May may go ahead now, because we've been talking about how, like, People are still travelling to America now, even though other countries have kind of closed the borders to it, to the UK, uh, France. <laughs> so yes, as previously mentioned, we have cancelled our Disneyland Paris trip. Um, we're just waiting to find out whether France doesn't reopen its borders before February. So if they don't, we'll get our flights back. To be honest, I hope they do, because I know a lot of the other people, other than us and people, have told us that they have trips planned, and I don't want me getting it, well us getting a couple of like, like whatever the flights were, I don't even know Gemma paid from back to stop other people's holidays uh, but yeah Florida we're kind of confident that we feel like it's going to go ahead which is probably going to be a real pain in the bottom if it doesn't but yeah uh, so we started sort of provisionally planning things like do we hire a car, where do we go <laughs> what parks we might want to visit, where do we want to do Genie uh, <laughs> We may, we may reconsider on that, we'll see what the queues are like. Uh, what kind of spending money we're going to need. So, you know, that's kind of exciting, at least to have that on the agenda again, because it's been a while. Uh, you, you know, you get like, I don't know if you've got Amazon Photos, but I think Facebook does it, obviously, as well. And Instagram does it, apparently, but I have no idea how. It does their memories. So, obviously, if you've been on holiday, you get the memories of, oh, this time, in our case, in 2019, you were in Florida. Uh, and that's just happened, it started yesterday, so I got one yesterday, it was a picture of a pint in the airport, uh, just as a nice reminder that, that uh, three years ago, my god, three years, uh, we were in um, Florida, 
yeah, we were doing the January trip, which at some point I might have to watch back again. Because uh, we are, we do the situation where when we are planning to go on holiday, we watch back of our all of our old vlogs. One as a reminder of what worked and what didn't on the vlogs, and two because we just like watching them. So I'm sure that will happen soon. Although we do have now so many trips that we may have to sort of go. Well, we'll just pick the better ones. Uh, the quality obviously gets better as they go along. They be, the editing becomes a bit snappier. He says, after doing a five minute piece to camera, chatting about random stuff. Um, <laughs> now, you know, like in the first trips, I would film an entire firework show and put it in the vlog, and that doesn't happen on the more recent ones because copyright reasons and uh, it doesn't really make for good video footage. Oh, look at this now. She gets spoiled rotten by him. How big is she getting in there compared to where she was? In fact, how big is he getting? <laughs> yeah, the rug is messy again. Gemma hoovered it on Thursday, it needs doing again. So that'll be on the list today. A rather large parcel arrived and you know what that means. I can't get near to it because the cats are all over it. <laughs> it's like new playtime. Right, let's see if we can open this without offending too many kittens. No, the answer is no, because she's on top of it, putting all of her weight down. <laughs> how, how does one open a Lego box again? Of course, there was tape on the back as well as the front. Anyway, on the box, and I greeted with hints of the goodies inside. <laughs> no freebies this time. Often Lego store does a freebie. If you pay, pay so much, you get a, fr uh, a free set. Uh, I've, I've been quite lucky with that in the past. I've had up to like three or four three fr free sets just because I've timed it well. But this is this year's modular, the 2022. I've kind of gone away from the winter builds now, which was our tradition originally. I'm saying that, but I've just I've, lit I, I've just not bought this year's yet. Uh, but, uh, but the modulars are just so pretty and they look really cool and they become quite collectible. And yeah, this one's the new one. So in the winter sales I did purchase, this is about £170, the ring alarm system. This is, of course I'm doing this, the kitten starts playing. Uh, this is an Amazon product now. Originally ring wasn't Amazon, Amazon bought the boat. Uh, I did already unbox it and it's all here. <laughs> now one thing you'll notice straight away is not a lot of wires here. <laughs> uh, also you'll notice it's working even though it's not plugged in. And also this working even though it's not plugged in because this entire kit can work wirelessly um, ultimately this you wouldn't run it wirelessly you keep this plugged in all the time but it'll run for 24 hours wirelessly so there's your backup in case someone cuts the power to the house fantastic it's already pinged me to say hey someone's un someone's unplugged the ring you need to check on that um, <laughs> so you know that's quite clever isn't it on here Liverpool ring alarm is using battery backup how good is that so yeah, anyway, what we have is, is an alarm now that's entirely wireless. I'm not saying this is perfect, and it's probably not a rela replacement for a professionally installed consumer alarm, but it's better than nothing, which we currently have. We have two sensors for the doors, two PIR motion sensors, you can see there. That one just lit up, but ultimately they're the same as the ones you get on a normal consumer alarm type thing. However, they are battery operated, and the batteries last about 6 to 12 months maybe. I need to double check that. Uh, they're only double air batteries, so they're super easy to replace. These run on, I think the CR2032s, the little button batteries that you get in watches. But ultimately, they'll probably last years, because in that situation it's completely deactive. But if you see, if I break that sensor... It tones and it tells me that someone's broken the sensor even though the alarms are not activated. So that's pretty cool. So what I need to do now is basically install all this kit. Uh, the installation is actually quite easy with them. Uh, this does need drilling. That'll need drilling but I'm probably not going to do it today because it'll just sit in the corner out of the way for now. These just stick on the wall using 3M sticky tape. The issue we have is, and I can probably show you now, over at our doors, because we do have the UPVC doors, there is a bit of a gap, there's a bit of a drop to the frame. But what I did was, went on Thingiverse and found a print, modified it a little bit, stuck some 3M tape on the back, and that can sit there. You can hear it dinging, and my sensor can sit there, 
we'll position this in a bit. I'm probably going to put it up there out the way. Uh, they don't actually have to be this close together. They can be up to like that far apart. So I'll probably put that one there and then give a little bit of leeway on the other side. And yeah, because it's sticky back, if I don't get it right first time, I can just stick more 3M tape on it and get it right. But we do also have one of those for the back door, which is a new addition to the alarm. We never used to have that, and the back door potentially would be a point of entry for our house, so that's good. Uh, I will probably put one of these sensors in the kitchen. And the other one I haven't decided on yet, it'll either be the lounge or possibly the landing. Uh, I might pick a third one of these up, but if I pick a third one, it will match, you know, the alarm that we currently have as far as sensors. The issue, I just need to confirm, do the cats set them off? Apparently they do have a pet safe mode, but then the, the old alarm did, but it's still, the, the cats still set it off. The one addition this does have that our old alarm doesn't, didn't is a ring camera. So uh, if someone does gain entry to the house, I can watch them and I can check on the house and also if I sign up for the monitored system which is I think £8 a month I'll double check and pop on the bottom of the video if it's not um, then this alarm if triggered will be monitored by Ring who will then try to contact me uh, also any video footage is stored for 30 days so that's pretty cool because that's that means if someone does break into the house sees the alarm and unplugs the camera it doesn't matter because all the footage has already been uploaded to the cloud there have been security concerns with these, uh, there was a leak of usernames and passwords and people were getting weird things where people were contacting them on the cameras but ultimately the fix for that and the fix for anything security related straight away is to set up two factor authentication so that's if you log into your Ring account it sends you a text message and says hey you logged into Ring, is it you? enter this code if someone else then gains access to your username and password they need to enter the code which is sent to your phone if they don't have that code, they can't do it. It's not perfect, but it's better. It's an extra level of security. Over on your phone, as you can see, you've got a history here, you've got alarms, monitored, monitoring itself at the minute. I haven't set up the Ring Protect, the online monitoring. This would be the camera if it was plugged in and there's various bits of information, but we can go into here, hit devices. Alarm base station is on battery backup, camera is offline. If I click into this, everything that's connected to the base station is here. So, if we look at that contact sensors there, it says closed. If I then move them apart, it updates that quickly, which is cool. These motion sensors, you can see motion detector just came up then. Um, adding them is literally as simple as doing that, finding your item. So in our case, maybe we wanted to add a sensor, we wanted to add a motion detector ready, scan QR code, it opens your camera up on the back of this as a QR code, you just scan it and then it pours them and it's done it was so easy to set up now actually, to the, the items that came in this box which included the sensor, this, this and this and that extender, I actually haven't shown that there is an extender which just extends the range and it's in the kitchen uh, everything was paired out of the box, so I was good to go. I just had to add these two in the camera. Um, as far as what can you do as far as I'm in the alarm from home, I have two options. I can go, I'm home, but I want the alarm to be on. So now, those two sensors are armed, but those two aren't. So if someone comes in through the front door, entry delay started. you get the entry delay. I can disarm on the phone or I can disarm on the device. I'm not going to do it on the device because it does actually have my code against it. I've keyed a code. But we also get a notification here saying, hey, someone's broken in. In our case, we'll just do that. And the alarm's, the alarm's disarmed. But yeah, I can do, you know, I can key. I'm not going to key my code, but I can do that and key a code. In fact, sorry, you do your code and what you want. It's errored now because that's not my code. Uh, well, that would do it from the keypad, like a traditional alarm, alarm so you weren't reliant on this app to be able to use the, the uh, alarm, which is kind of cool. Uh, here you have um, an alert. If someone's broken in and the alarm hasn't go off, gone off, you can hit that button and it'll set the alarm off. If you see a fire, you can press that button and it sets a fire alarm off from this thing. It's loud. I'm not going to do it. It's so loud. It's like 90 odd decibels or something like that, so the neighbours will be able to hear it. If you've got a medical emergency, you press that one. It plays a different tone, so there's a medical emergency. Not essential, but a nice little feature to have. 
The one last thing that I don't have, but I could get if I wanted to, it's just I don't have a ladder or the ability to install it, is you can get an outdoor alarm box. But I kind of think that that's probably just... I don't know about you, but if an alarm goes off in the street, the first thing you, don't, you think nowadays is not, is my neighbour being burgled? It's more along the lines of that blooming alarm's going off again. So I'm kind of like, for this, it contacts me and tells me that someone's in the house, even if I'm not in the house. You know what I mean? It'll do it through my phone. It contacts Gemma. So Gemma's going to be getting pings on her phone now. She's going to be wondering what's going on. Uh, <laughs> It also, if you have the monitoring system, it will contact Ring and they can, you know, help you. So I think that's enough. Some standard stuff that all alarm systems have, if you tamper with this by taking the battery off, it'll notify me. So if someone comes in and goes, the sensor's there, I'll take the batteries out, it'll tell me. One thing that my older, old alarm doesn't have, and I know more modern ones do have, is this is connecting, it's reliant on our Wi-Fi, isn't it? What happens if our Wi-Fi goes down? Well, actually, um, I feel like I'm selling this product now. In there, there's a SIM card, so it'll contact us over a 3G network and say, hey, someone's in your house and someone your power's been taken offline, your Wi-Fi is offline, something like that. As previously mentioned, this is battery backed up. I think the battery might be in there, so you could probably replace the battery. And this is battery powered, so that plugs into a USB charger to recharge. You could permanently wire it in as well if you wanted to. So yeah, I'm kind of happy with this. It's, again, it's not, I'm not promoting this, I don't have any codes or anything, but for our uses it seems to be pretty good. It's better than nothing. So I guess the next job is to fit the thing. <laughs> That's where the fun starts. And also deactivate the old alarm. The old alarm I've turned off, but I can't remove the control panel from in there because it would require electrical work that I'm not really willing to do. The sensors I'll probably just lop out. They do look a bit messy now, they're very old. Right, so the first sensor is going to go up there, but I started cleaning there, and I suddenly realised the entire door needed a clean. I mean, there's still sticky stuff up there, up there from the previous occupant of this house, who for some reason decided to parcel tape a reef to the front door? I don't know. <laughs> I think they stuck some string down on it when over. I just stuck a 3M hook on. Uh, and, but that obviously then expanded to cleaning this wall here, which gets a lot of traffic through and therefore was a bit mucky. And yeah, the entire door's done. Uh, as far as the sticky, I'm using an alcohol spray and just elbow grease to get the thing off. It's a nightmare, my arm is aching. <laughs> well, that first sensor went up quite easily. The alignment is ever so slightly off, but it's more than enough for the uh, ring to pick it up. So if I open the door now, you see the light flash, and you hear the tone. So that works. As for the um, stickiness, these come with sticky, but I got this 3M tape that's uh, specialised for UPVC and PVC and metal and paint apparently. Uh, it sticks like poop to a blanket, so get it right first time. <laughs> and over at the kitchen door, I've got my magnet in place. Now we just line up this one and stick it down. Again, cleaned with a bit of alcohol spray just to make sure that it's a good connection. Interestingly, that one lit up. It might be, I just press the button. Let's see how we get on. Yeah, that works. Ooh, the weather out there is terrible. So in the kitchen, I have the range extender. It says to put it uh, between your furthest out sensor and your control panel. Uh, in my case, they'll probably not be too far apart because our house isn't huge. Look, more sticky stuff on this window left by the previous owners of the house who were obsessed with sticking things down and yes I just stuck that down don't <laughs> message me about it well that's the motion sensor got some holes to fill there and there's the control panel installed I did a better job of drilling than the last guy which is rare to say the least <laughs> so I'm gonna have to fill this in and remove these plugs as well I've temporarily popped the camera here. This is obviously not going to be its permanent home because it needs wire, wire trunk and putting in or something like that. Still undecided on where this is going to go. Lounge probably seems like a good idea though. The actual control unit is down in that corner. I'm going to hang it on the wall at some point, but not right now because all the wiring's down there. And to be honest, I don't really mind that it's on the floor down there for now. You're always home. I've been interrupted by cameras. Uh, 
this sensor remains. Uh, I think I'm going to put it in the back bedroom because I think that'll be a good idea because there's equipment in there like my computers and all my Lego. This will keep an eye on that. The camera itself is actually a motion sensor as well. It's a camera based motion sensor so maybe not as accurate. But that'll probably do for the lounge. Uh, but yeah, that was a very simple install. Three screw uh, drill holes, shallow, quite shallow drill holes for the control panel. Two bigger holes for the um, actual control unit which I haven't done yet but I will do. Uh, everything else is just sticky back tape. Super easy. And if you're like me, you're going to want to know how loaded it is, aren't you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> it does warn you. Uh, be, be, be warned. Uh, sirens are loud enough for your neighbours to hear. Ow! <laughs> we'll not be doing that too often. And if you want to know about the cameras, you can look at them on your phone. So there I am. Toomies. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, you can't even see it. <laughs> it's just me staring into a camera. Okay, now I need to tidy up before Gemma gets home. To give you an idea of how long that took to install, I got in the house at half, what, half eight. Um, started on that at probably about half nine, ten. Took me time, ummed and aired quite a lot, and it's now 11 14. So it was like Probably an hour if you didn't um an hour, you know, if you plan in advance like I never do. Plus, I also had to remove the old alarm system. I reckon you could probably have that in in best part of half an hour. Hello. Look. Okay. Uh, she's bum. <laughs> um, so, uh, the rest of the day has been a quiet one. I played some games with friends, did a little bit of housework, avoided some other housework, and uh, I had a bath. Trim my beard as you can see. A uh, bit of a tidy up. Look at Pixie, she's so cute. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna go and pick Gemma up now and uh, then I'll cook tea. And now I have a cat's tail in my face. Oh, there's the other one. Hello, Reggie. Reggie's just come from around the bay on the coach. He's going to see his brother look. He didn't like the hoover. I had to hoover the um, dust up from the drilling. He got upset. Anyway, I'll see you in a bit. Gemma's home! <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. You ready for some tea? Yeah, I'm starving. Oh, I'm going to have to cook now, aren't I? You are, yeah. My back's aching. Listen to How's me. your back been, by the way? Um, a little bit tweaky, but not um, major. I'm trying okay. to be careful and work. Better than so. it was did you hoover or something today? No, I didn't. Just wondering why all the cat scratches were in the cat bed. Oh, because I was playing Beat Server on VR. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that in the vlog. I got Beat Server for VR. So I thought it'd be a fun way to do a little bit of exercise. And it turns out it is. Anyway, curry time. Curry time. Well, I made short work of that. I have um, sauteed some meat, some onions, some peppers, then thrown in a tin of a tin of tuna, I nearly said that, a tin of chopped tomatoes, yeah, some curry powder, a little bit of extra chilli, a little bit of tomato paste, some salt pepper and stuff like that. Now I'm going to pressure cook this now for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes or so, I'll see how it goes. Got to reduce this down, but ooh, it looks good already. And yeah, that's done, came out quite nicely, I think. So we uh, enjoyed our, well I enjoyed my curry, did you enjoy yours? Yes, it was lovely, very okay. cheeky. Yeah, and we watched A Quiet Place too, which was, yeah. Uh, bad ending. And then we watched a lot of vlogs. Mm. And Gemma's a bit tired now, so you're gonna, well, we're gonna go to bed soon, aren't we? You've got no pants on. I've got no pants on, thank you for telling everyone I didn't have the camera that low, but now they know. <laughs> I have tra I have underpants. <laughs> and, but yeah, anyway, um, I was chatting with my dad, uh, Chris Boxinder and he was I was mentioning that Gemma had bought me some bourbons and that I occasionally like a whiskey and my dad actually ta told me the whiskey that my granddad used to drink which is a dimple so I ordered a dram of dimple whiskey to try so I'm gonna give it a quick try now and see what I think never tried this one I also ordered four others because you know if you're gonna order one you might as well order a few including a couple of 20 odd year old uh, Glenfiddich 20 odd year old one and a Japanese one, so those should be nice to try at some point in the future as well. But for me, whiskey is something I will have a very occasional dram of it, and that's about it. I won't be drinking more than one of these a week, tops. 
usually I won't have any for a month or so. Anyway, I'm going to try it now. Of course, a lot of the fun of these is trying to get the wax off the top of the drum because they dip it in wax and let it drip down. Very nicely packaged. These are from uh, Masters of Malt. Uh, I've ordered the Edredor and the Jamesons that I ordered earlier last year I got from there. And uh, Gemma got me the gift set for Christmas from there. Much like with the beers, I'm not an expert in tasting things. Um, so I'm not going to be able to give you detailed analysis on the, the notes and all that stuff. I'll just say whether I like it or not. Um, it smells like whiskey. <laughs> it's a good start. <laughs> Very smooth. Not a huge amount of flavour in that one that I'm recognising anyway. It's pleasant though. I don't know if it'll be a regular for me. Reggie Wanson. It's not quite. Reggie you can't have any of this. It's not quite Edrida, which is my my uh, drink of choice. Although. You like the Jamesons, com don't you? Yeah, I like the Jamesons, it was nice. And you got me Gentleman Jack, which is a bourbon. Um, uh, I could probably drink that neat as well. I could I can't really drink Jack Daniels neat, it's a little bit too um a little bit too <laughs> for me. <laughs> but uh, the gentleman Jack I could quite happily drink neat. I never put ice in them or anything like that. Oh cool. That is like really smooth though as well. I mean I don't know if I've just got a taste for these now, but I used to be like mm. but now I'm like mmm. <laughs> I'm not going to give these five star ratings, I'm just going to say whether I enjoy them or not. This one I do. I think the second test actually tasted nicer than the first one. Get off me shoe! So it's Sunday morning now. Um, Gemma's just watching some Disney shopping, aren't you? Yeah, it's a new one I found. She's called. She's just called the um, Disney Shopper Holic. I think she lives Not there. Not Sarah. <laughs> and she goes around like the character warehouses and all the different shops. All right. Looking at the so she'd be looking at the fiftieth stuff. What she does a regular weekly. I um, character warehouse. Yeah, so, so basically, you're planning for our trip now, well, planning you what know. you might want to buy and things like that. Well, just to see what the, if it's worth even going to the character yeah. warehouse. Yeah, I know. I know Disney have had real supply issues over the last few months because of see, man, stuff like that. general logistics issues. That's like four pounds on Shop Disney UK mm. now, so. Stuff like that I wouldn't buy because I know I could get it That's here. That's Halloween anyway. stuff, yeah. Well, I bought some Halloween stuff in the sale, didn't I? And I got yeah. really good deals mm -hmm. on it. So it's, it's stuff that's park exclusive there, and they have like Alex and Arnie and Pandora behind yeah. the till. Uh, also, we're having breakfast. Well, brunch. That. brunch, yeah. Because it is actually not morning no. anymore. Well, we had a bit of a line. It was nice. That was a very long week. <laughs> uh, one thing I just want to mention. Uh, be quite upfront about it. Um, we're going to sign up for the Amazon affiliate program. Uh, all that will mean for the vlogs is in the description there'll be a few links to stuff that we use, so like this camera probably and memory card or whatever. Uh, anything we mention in the vlogs that we bought, we may pop a link in there. What that means for you is if you were to click through that link and buy that item, or even if you then browsed Amazon apparently and bought something else, I don't know how it works, I haven't fully read the terms, uh, we get a little cut back, you don't pay any extra, Amazon just take out of their profits and give us a little nudge, uh, just that money will then go back into the channel because the cameras obviously cost us money and stuff like that, but what we won't be doing is mention it every time we uh, make a video, it's just, it's there if you want it, if you don't ignore it, we'll carry on. And once again we're looking at fridges. And the vitamin zone in this one, not the moist zone. This one's got fresh box. Mmm. This one's got a vi another vitamin zone. But also, free chicken. <laughs> and this one's got one of the computers on it. Food 11, 10, 8, 9, ice cream for my bum and scram. This one's got full open box. <laughs> this one is awesome. <laughs> Easy slide as well. Why are there so many innuendos in the fridge freezers? <laughs> Multi box. No, oh, nothing written down there, probably for the best. Yep. Gemma's found the moist zone. You quite like this one, don't you? Because yeah. it's got these big drawers, but I've never heard of this brand. Hey, hiya. So I'll have to 
to do some reading on them. I don't like how far they come out and how much they bang when you open them as well. And also I'm not really bothered about a water dispenser. No, 499 quid reduced from 679 is not bad. I, I, I feel like they had one that didn't have um, a water dispenser as well. Last time I was here like there, but it's not here anymore. Alright, must have sold out. Yeah. <laughs> do you want a most balanced crisp? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so childish. A big freezing zone as well. Oh, it's got things on the door too. Yeah, freezing zone. It's got it sounds actually quite nice. LG, 500 quid reduced from 700. So one thing we absolutely do want to do this year is see a bit more street art. So we thought we'd start the year off by coming and seeing what is believed to be the biggest piece of street art in the UK. And here it is. It's believed to be the largest in the UK by a single artist. It's by artist Paul Curtis, who did the... Uh, I have a bird at in town in Liverpool and it is of a sand lizard it's actually two sand lizards I think they're called Ainsley and Dale yeah there you go Paul Curtis has signed it up the side this is amazing <laughs> I love that he's painted all the walls outside of it as well the other one on the side of the building. Apologies for the wind, I can't really do much about it. <laughs> this is at Ainsdale Beach which is just there. So if you do want to come down, parking is a bit challenging. We were very lucky we just managed to get the last spot on the car park. We didn't fancy parking on the uh, Double Yellows because there are uh, traffic wardens here. That's cool isn't it? Yeah. it's sand lizards because they're a native species and you will actually occasionally find them in the dunes here um, but they are endangered so difficult to spot and because we're daft we're having a January walk to the beach we haven't actually brought you here before I don't think so it's nice to see it so when I was a youngster we used to come here in the summer and in the summer you can drive the car right onto the beach and set up for the afternoon and inevitably at the end of the day people would get stuck on the beach and I seem to have a vivid memory of having to be get people to help us push the car off the beach to get back onto the uh, road. <laughs> oh, it's very cold and windy down here and also we're getting wet and I just stepped into Gemma's photo. <laughs> but we're going to call and get an ice cream. No we're not. <laughs> we're going to go back to the car now and get warm. Quite interesting, the uh, info board here talks about uh, natterjack toads and also decaying palm oil debris. Debris? Debris. Watch for your dogs. And roosting birds as well. Okay, I'd like to see some natterjack toads. Yeah. Please watching. keep dogs out of any pool. So it's basically they're only telling it because of dogs rather than, <laughs> rather than, ooh, that's interesting. Anyway, back to the car cold. <laughs> ah, we're back. That was a nice little afternoon, a little jaunt. Sort of unplanned, I just, as we'd finished with the uh, curries, we'd seen a few fridges that we quite liked the look of. Uh, we just thought, mm, let's go and have a look, see if we can get a parking space. Um, it's worth mentioning as well, uh, I think I mentioned it on the vlog, that they were planning on putting a pain display car park in. The pub, just around the corner across from the Pontins, is now a pain display park. Car park, sorry. So if you want to go there and you don't want to get a ticket, that might be worth looking at. I think out of season you can park on the road just outside as well, but there was a uh, an inspector ticketing people who are parking on the curb, which is fair enough. Nice afternoon playing Beat Saber, honey. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Beat Saber is basically you have two lightsabers mm -hmm. and it plays music and you've got to swipe targets and basically yeah. hit the beats in time with the music. It's a lot of fun. And it's a bit of a workout as well. Yeah. Chatter. <laughs> not chatter, but I'm roasting. And now we're having a lovely roast dinner. This roast chicken. I'll probably watch some vlogs or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. see what's on TV. We'll find some mm -hmm. now. Well, I won't show you Gemma, but she's currently playing Beats there, but we've managed to get it through the TV now, so you can look at what it actually is. We have an extra challenge here, is because we also have to step around cats while playing it, which makes it extra, it's like expert mode. 
course, I also downloaded the Green Day expansion for Gemma's play. <laughs> this is horrible. Well, we're heading into Monday. We're catching up on a bit of uh, Rate My Takeaway there. And I'm building a wooden baby Yoda puzzle I got for Christmas off Gemma's mum. It's very cool. It also looks like it's going to drive me mad because they're all tiny little pieces. <laughs> Some of these pieces are like character shirts, a little X wing. And there's a fellow walking. It's quite cool, isn't it? Sorry, guys. That's that. And, uh, and Danny's chair just, just broke. And the All veneer. Right, oh, and also someone is help, helping me. And we moved on to watching Hawkeye. That's, that is what it's called, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I forget. Also, I finished the puzzle. That was fun. You alright hun? Mm -hmm. In keeping with our standard healthy January we're having KFC for tea. And <laughs> um, yeah. KFC for Asia. No we haven't. Um, it's, it smells good. Uh, so we've had a, one of those days, uh, one of the roads near our house is closed so the traffic has been a nightmare so it's taken me like an hour to just get the car onto the drive. Not actually sitting in the car for an hour but, but anyway I think with that we're going to end this weekly vlog this uh, now because it's Tuesday and I want to get it edited tomorrow. Also my editing software needs renewing tomorrow and they haven't sent me a code for a cheap renewal yet so I might have to go and find a new editing software at some point. Uh, but thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm. See you next one. Bye. I'm here. Bye. And Reggie says, I'm going to turn your laptop off by give standing on it. Also, give me chicken.